I'm looking at my waffle maker the other day thinking, hey, I should do a waffle maker recipe. Then I thought I can do five waffle maker recipes. Then I thought, let's do five munchy waffle maker recipes. Now we're talking. All right, before I do anything else today, I have to delint myself. I apologize for rubbing on my mic. I had a hair, a random white long hair. It wasn't mine. I'm getting silver, but I'm not like white. My hair's not like that long. Right here on my shirt the other day and a whole bunch of you noticed. It was quite annoying. Max noticed once he started editing the episode. Did you notice? No. Chance he didn't notice. Okay, am I good? Am I good? Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Jeez. That yeah, I'm managing our Mitsua tea order for you. I understand. That wasn't a rhetorical sent question. Me a picture because the one you wanted is out. Oh, sorry, we're ordering tea. I like to drink tea, unsweetened green tea from the, the Japanese supermarket. And we're, boy, are these first world problems. Does that say rich green tea? I think so. Well, I hope it doesn't mean it, but probably that one's fine, the okay. green top, either. Seriously, first world problems. The Japanese market is out of the kind of tea I like to drink that keeps me going during an episode. I'm forced to drink mostly water with a splash of cranberry juice today. And this is the deli container that we store stuff in. It's a restaurant thing. Okay, five. Do I tell them what the five are or do I just let them be surprised? You like to reveal as uh, we go, I think. Yeah, a surprise. Well, surprise. Oh, I can't, I can tell you this. Only one of them will include waffle mix. So that's exciting. And the first one does not include waffle mix. It's breakfast. Okay, we're making an omelet, but watch what I want to do first. I want some vegetables in here, but I just don't want them straight raw. So we've got some uh, diced Holland pepper and some green onion, of course. It's doing exactly what it should be doing, sizzling. This is exciting as. Just spread them around a bit. I probably could have separated them a little better, but oh, we're doing fine. And just give them a little bit. They don't need a ton of time. But a vegetable with a little sizzle on it is more flavor than a raw vegetable. That's just the way it is. Heat changes things. Thank you, Max. That is what we used to say. I don't think you've said that in a while. It's true. Heat does change things. And while we're doing that, I can beat a couple eggs over here. Oh, boy. Show right off the bat. Jeez. I don't think there's anyone worse in the history of the planet for cracking eggs poorly. No one cracks eggs as bad as I do. Look at that. Are you kidding me now? I gotta come back in. The shell attracts, apparently. Is it one of those days? It seems like it, which is good for entertainment purposes. Okay, mix this. Adding a little salt and pepper. And then a little cheese. And that's poured in. But first we have to spray the top because we haven't done that yet. Maybe a little extra on the bottom. Let's try and get this in as neatly as we can, as evenly as we can, I meant. I think we're doing a pretty good job here. Thank you. And we're down. We leave it for a second and then we flip it. Fantastic. And we leave it. How long? Well, it depends on how hot you've got it, how warmed up it is. I'm at about medium heat. I want it to cook through without burning. So we'll check it in a, probably two minutes and see what happens. I don't know what's happening. Who would have thought? Come on. You can hear those eggs cooking. That you can hear the eggs screaming. It's going to be fine. Let's take a look, quick look. Now you got to go. Oh my, <laughs> snap. It's, oh, sorry, I said snap again. That is I think I want, awesome. I think I want like another sort of 30 seconds or maybe half, well, half a minute would be the same thing. So maybe, maybe another minute. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, come on. The crazy thing is you would never look at this and think eggs or omelet. You would look at this and think you're looking at a waffle. Well, the question is, can we get it out? Oh, we can. But it's gonna be hot. Hot as blazes, as my grandmother used to say. I don't wanna trash it. So how do I do this? Yeah, it's coming right out. It's perfect. Ow, ow, look at that. Wow. Look at that. Who wants a piece? A waffle omelet. Waffle omelet, absolutely. That's crazy. Who wants some? I do. I, I do. certainly wasn't very even with my, uh, my mm -hmm. distribution of uh, vegetables, was I? The boys have theirs and we eat. It's a freaking delicious little omelet. Waffle omelet, damn. How good is that? So awesome and so easy. Wow. I love it. An important part is starting to cook the vegetables before you put the egg in. This has notches from one to six. I had it on four. I didn't want to burn it. I thought the outside might burn before the egg cooked through. This is about to two and a half minutes, I think, and it's perfect. Let's go for a quesadilla now, shall we? So you still want to spray. It's not like anything is gonna stick from the tortilla, but. You want a little bit of grease there to help get some extra color. So now we're going cheese. Maybe not quite that much. I've got to double this. Next, some carnitas. Slowly cooked pork. We've made carnitas before. Look, you could put anything in here. This could be a chopped up roast beef or little bits of hamburger or anything. But like at the restaurant, you want to go to the 
edges, you want to go all the way so people will get some in every bite. Don't be cheap and skimp or scrimp, whatever the right word is. Good. Now, how about some jalapenos? Diced, loving it. Like McDonald's, I'm loving it. It's gonna be the greatest thing. And then finally, more cheese. Is this gonna shut? Oh, I didn't take that into consideration. Well, F it, let's find out. Just needed enough so I can... You got it. Turn it. Yes. <sighs> All right, we're gonna check after about a minute and a half or so. It's a mess. Does it get folded after? Not necessarily. It's open face? Yeah, I think what I'm no, gonna do. He put it to. Oh, I thought actually, yeah, he did. I did what? You didn't put the. Oh sh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Well, about to put the top. Case oh the my end. god. For some reason, Chance was like. Chance. Wait, what? what Chance, you're a genius. Oh my god. It's never gonna shut. We got it. Yes. Oh. Ugh. Yes, I, I hate forgetting things. Generally, it's salt or something smaller than the top of the quesadilla. All right, let's check it. Oh, oh my God. God, is that beautiful. Okay, now I have an idea. I'm gonna now turn it like a quarter turn so we get some cross hatches and extra crispy, like that, okay? Down we go. Oh boy, this is gonna, we're really testing the limits of Use this. Use that dad strength. <laughs> okay, it's not shutting. It did shut before. Well, screw it. I'm just gonna have to hold it. <laughs> look at do what we gotta do. Look at the mess. Oh man! But it needed lots of cheese. It's not a quesadilla. But it's just a, a hint of cheese. Oh, it looks so good. That's what I was waiting for. Extra crispy. That's a beast. Look how beautiful this part is. Love that. All right, we can probably take it out and have a bite. It's a frisbee of carnitas and cheese. That's how I like my frisbees. See this? Those little crispy bits, damn, nice. It's absolutely fused together. Wow. Nice. Oh, bites, boys. And Chance pointed out, uh, once again, it looks just like a waffle, but it's not. There is no waffle, only shape. Mm. Mm. God damn it. That's crazy. And you know what? Unlike a regular quesadilla, it has so much more crisp to not crisp ratio. It's almost like it's deep fried. Mm -hmm. it's not greasy and Oh my gross. god. It looked like it was going to be greasy because of all the, the grease coming off the thing, the melting cheese, but it's not. It's dry, it's melty inside, it's got crisp from this. Some of the bits of the pork have gotten crispy because they've snuck out. Hey, there's three more things to make. Let's go. All right, this one, uh, we're actually using the waffle batter to make a ham and cheese. Now we need a light coating here. If I can do this. I can't do too much because you're gonna see what's gonna happen next. Now we come in with some cheese and I'm using Swiss, this lacy Swiss. I'm gonna just try and fill some gaps here. Like that, all right? Now, some ham. Beautiful, beautiful. Just a couple more. We might as well make it a decent amount of ham, right? Mm -hmm. That's what she said. That's what, <laughs> why would she say that? It doesn't even make sense. Now I want a little mustard like this. That was Dijon, by the way. And this just gets the rest of our batter. Please, God, I want you to work in the worst way possible. How's that look? Very nice. Looks very nice. Lid on, push, and turn. And we wait. And we got the light that tells me it thinks it's ready. Let's look. And I think it's ready. Looks beautiful. Nice amount of crisp. Basically just built the sandwich into the waffle. This is great. It looks like a waffle, you know why? because this is the only one that has waffle mix as part of it. Look at those crispy, cheesy guys. That, right? That's the best. And we cut. <laughs> Look at that. I love it. Let's have a bite. One, two, three. Mm. Wow, that's nuts. Why is it so good? The mustard. It's so it's really soft. Good. The mustard's great, but it's just a crispy, soft, you get the crispy outside, you get soft bits in the indentations or something, or it's really good. And you know, of course, you don't like ham, change it. You don't like the cheese, the, the Swiss cheese, put something else. Just do whatever you want. It's a panini maker, basically, that puts indentations in it. That's what it is. Use it as a panini maker. Mm hmm. Hmm. Who wants crispy fried rice? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, so this one involves rice. I'm a fan of keeping these guys in the house. They're little uh, seven and a half ounce packs of rice. They come looking like this. I'm not pimping this brand. 
you get them in the Asian markets, uh, the, even the big Western supermarkets carry them now. You just pull back the plastic, you microwave them for 90 seconds, you got fresh rice for almost anything. So that's what I've done about an hour ago, and now this is cool. So this will be the base of it, we'll put it in the bowl, and we'll add rice like that. And we're gonna try and make this as fried rice-like as we can, though we're not really frying it, so we're gonna add a little soy. That's it, teaspoon-ish. A splash of sesame chili oil, because it's so great. We're gonna add a little sambal, don't need too much. And then some shredded cabbage, like that. This actually was leftover cabbage salad that one of the boys made the other night. It's gonna be perfect in here. It's a very light dressing, some green onion. And then what I think it's gonna need to keep it together is an egg. Salt and pepper, and we can mix. Mix the egg a bit. Should have used my hand, should have, but I know that would have driven Max insane because of how wet this is. And I've not done this, so I don't know if it's gonna work, but it definitely smells good at this point. And when it's all mixed, let's get it in the waffle maker. We spray, and in. Oh, I'm feeling very good about this, gentlemen. Like really good. Well, it's certainly the perfect amount of rice for this kind of waffle maker. Even it out, let's get our lid on, push down, and turn. And wait for it to tell us it's ready. This little blue light, it's not the most sophisticated waffle maker and I'm not pimping the brand, I'm just saying when it's ready, that little blue light goes on. And it's time for the fried rice waffle. Oh my God. <gasps> oh, look at the edges, crispy. Oh, I, 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 come on, let's check this guy out. Well, here's what we have to do. Each. Oh, boys. Go. It's piping. Wow. Mm, wow. Therein lies the beauty of keeping those little packs around. Right? It's so good. It needs one more thing. Put your camera down here, buddy. You can't have a munchies episode without something like that. It would be wrong not to have this egg on top of that, am I right? And then that. Oh. Yep, that's what's up. Oh my God. One of the greatest things of all time. I'm not kidding. That's classic munchie. And by the way, that came together in about five minutes. When you throw the rice in, shut the lid, start making your egg. All right, one more. And you're gonna like the first component for sure. Bespoke Post has been a sponsor of Sam the Cooking Guy. And if you don't know, they're a monthly membership club that sends the most amazing boxes of stuff. It's free to join. And what's cool is 90% of the stuff comes from small businesses, many of which are small businesses right here in the USA. You've probably seen us talk about the Terra Knife before that comes from Bare Bones, a company in Salt Lake City. It's all based on a quiz that you take. So the preferences that you put in are the kind of stuff that you get. And you get to preview the box every month before it comes. And if you don't like it, swap it for something else. Or you can just blow off that month altogether and wait for the next one and not get anything. And of course not get charged. So here's this month's box. It's called Smoked. And this will make a mixologist out of anyone. You start with a glass of bourbon. Then you take some hickory wood smoking chips and you put just a little beautiful pile right beside your glass. Then you take the torch that comes in the box, you light the little pile of chips and when it starts smoking, you put the lid on. After it's done, off comes the lid. And what you're left with is beautifully infused smoky bourbon. But wait, don't stop there because this month's box also comes with the ability to make big, beautiful round ice cubes. You take a sip, you enjoy the smoky aroma. Look, we've loved every box that we've gotten from them. The weekender bag, the knives, all that kind of stuff. So to get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter SAM20 at the checkout. That's SAM20. Or you can go to bespokepost.com slash SAM20. This one begins with no spray because the thing going in already has enough grease to it and that's bacon. We're just gonna lay some bacon <laughs> slices right in here. Just whatever you can fit. Perfect. And close the lid. Return. I put this guy through the ringer today. <laughs> I know. Oh God, it keeps doing that. Okay, we turn, we give it about uh, two and a half minutes and then we're gonna pick it up and scoot the pieces around because the little divots might keep some of the stuff from getting cooked. So a couple minutes and then we're back. Okay, we're there. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, I just wanna put them on here to drain a bit. I, shit, it's hot. And this is gonna be the 
perfect amount for what we want. Okay, so the bacon needs to be cut. Beautiful. Love it. Now, we're ready. So we get the waffle maker in place. We lift it up. We are gonna give it a spray to get the tops of these indentation guys. And then we come along with some cornbread mix. This was a just add water package. No, it wasn't. We ground our own corn and made it from scratch. Oh yes, I forgot. We, it's exactly what we did. All right, you got a nice amount here. Never know how much. That looks good. Now the bacon. How great is this gonna be? And I do think I wanna just push some of them down a little bit, just some. We shut. I have a sense some of it's gonna leak. Oh, damn. It's all right, gonna be fine. Everybody just take your seats, we're gonna be fine. Lights on, we're ready and, oh shit. Look at this beautiful thing. Look at this beautiful thing. Ow, ow, come on buddy. You see little bits of bacon? It looks beautiful. I think it needs something. How about this? How about just a little butter? Who wants a bite? Wow. <laughs> How fun is that? How stinking fun is that? Voice. Bacon, cornbread, waffle, anyone? And one, two, and three. And what do you say about it? You say it's damn good. You know one of the best parts? Mm. Aside from this slightly sweet waffle and the savory crispy bites of bacon, is that when you cook bacon in a pan, it splatters everywhere. It's self-contained in the, uh, the waffle iron. Made hardly any mess, and it's delicious. And we made five things in a waffle maker because this is something you should know, and this is great munchy food. The key to munchy food is it happens fast. And all this, fast. Self-contained, neat, freaking delicious. We got some cornbread to eat, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. Don't make the same thing all the time, and uh, blah, blah, blah. This has been a good waffle maker for us. Yeah. It's been through quite a lot.